Fortinet, one of the largest cybersecurity firms in the country, reported earnings last night and it, shares are down about 20%. Investors are spooked, but it's not only that. There was a number in Fortinet's earnings that is dragging the entire sector down. Uh, stocks like CrowdStrike, Zscaler, Palo Alto Networks are falling as well. So what was that number and what does it mean? My name is Brian Stoffel. We'll spend the next 10 minutes trying to figure that out. As of this time of this recording, I do not own shares of any of the stocks I just mentioned, except for CrowdStrike, which I do own shares of. So let's dive into the company's first quarter. Before we do, shout out to YCharts for sponsoring today's video. More from them in just a minute. So this was Fortinet's second quarter of the year. Depending on how, where it trades today, it's about 45 to $48 billion company. On the top line, revenue grew a very healthy 26% that did fall just shy of Wall Street's estimates. And it was within management's range, but it fell shy of the midpoint of its range. On the bottom line, relatively good news. Earnings per share was up 42% and beat management and Wall Street's estimates on a non-gap basis. Margins, everything looked good there too. 77% gross margin uh, and there was expansion there. The operating margin and net margins expanded meaningfully. So all in all, good, good information coming through here. Free cash flow also expanded and so did net income meaningfully and the balance sheet is in pristine shape. So overall, this looks pretty good. Where's the bad news? Well, it starts when we look at the company's forecast moving forward. So let's do that real quick so we can see what's going on. Management says the midpoint of their guidance, they believe 17% revenue growth for the third quarter. That is quite a bit shy of Wall Street's hope of 20% growth. For the full year, previously, management had guided for 24% growth on the top line, which matched Wall Street's estimates. However, they revised full year guidance and it is now just 22% growth. But all in all, that still doesn't look like it's enough to justify a 20% drop and pulling an entire sector down. What happened? Well, we're gonna talk about a concept called billings. Now, what you need to know about Fortinet is that it not only provides cybersecurity services in, on a subscription basis, but it also sells hardware, especially for firewalls. That is something that differentiates it from players like Zscaler and CrowdStrike and Sentinel One, and that'll be something that's worth keeping in mind. They sell hardware. The other thing is this concept of billings, which is basically revenue that is guaranteed to be collected if it hasn't been already, but can't be recognized as revenue because whatever product or service you're offering, you haven't offered it over the time frame of that contract. So it's a great indicator of where revenue is going in the future. So if we look at this, this is something that the company provides. The, they say that if you look at revenue and billings, they tend to mimic each other. These are the growth rates for revenue and billings going back 13 years. Revenue is the yellow line, billings is the blue line, and there's usually a little bit of a lag with billings. When it goes up, revenue will go up in the future. When it goes down, revenue goes down. The growth rates go down in the future. So what did the company, where are they in terms of billings? Well, you see that it maxed out at about 42% growth year over year in billings in the end of 2021. That's not surprising. It's already everybody is getting cybersecurity tools and the pandemic only catalyzed that. Now it makes sense that it's been falling since then because it can't grow at these rates forever. That would be obscene. However, it's, it's tapering down slowly, 36, 36, 35, 33, 32, 30. That's just fine. And so it's expected that maybe it'd be in the mid twenties by the end of the year, but let's see what actually happened. Management said last quarter, we believe billings will grow 21.5%. But what we found out yesterday was that it just grew 18.5%. Okay, that's not great, but that's where we are. What about the next quarter? Ooh, all the way down to 12.8%. For the full year, they had said they believed it would grow at about 21.2%, but they revised that. They now believe at the midpoint, it's just gonna be about 17%. You add all this together, and what they're saying is by the fourth quarter, they believe billings growth will have slowed all the way down to 12%, 11%. Here's another way of looking at it. This is that 42% high peak that it reached you see it's slowly tapering down to 30% in the last quarter. And they're saying it's gonna go all the way from 30% growth to just 11% growth by the end of the year. That is what spooked the market so much. 
It's also worth noting that some of that slowdown you see right here was in that product revenue change which is important because again, that's not something that affects companies like CrowdStrike and Zscaler. They said that their uh, performance reflected large enterprise, which means big companies being, um, being a little bit more cautious. And they also pointed out that after 30 plus percent product growth over the previous few years, uh, it makes sense that there's a slowdown. In other words, they've already given all of their, their hardware out that the, the market needs right now. They also said that in the second half of June, there was a lot of big deals that were pushed into future quarters and they saw their contract duration shortened by a month and a half, which created a headwind as well. So I just wanna stop right there before we get to this and say that that's important. So in terms of the hardware stuff, that's less affecting everybody else, especially those cloud cybersecurity firms, but the overall slowdown, that could affect C scaler, CrowdStrike, we have to wait and see. If it doesn't, then that means this is a more Fortinet specific problem. But if it does, it's reflecting a larger industry wide issue. So if you invest in Fortinet, this is not a company that I have covered extensively, but I would watch billings first, obviously, subscription, or they call it service revenue, keep an eye on margins, and then also free cash flow. I haven't done enough analysis on this to feel comfortable talking about a moat direction or a thesis, or even to give it a score. This is more about what happened with Fortinet that drew all these other companies down. But if you do invest in Fortinet, it is worth looking at its valuation. Now, I would say this is between stage four and stage five in the growth cycle, which means we can look at things like price to earnings, forward earnings, and free cash flow. To that, we go to wide charts. Thank you again for sponsoring today's video and for making your products. Brian Froldy and I use them every day. If you want to get a free trial of wide charts, click on the link in the show notes below and mention Brian Froldy's name and you'll get 20% off your subscription. So if we look at the PE ratio before the market opens today, it's sitting at about 63. That's high, but not as high as it's been in the past. After the market opens, it's probably going to dip all the way down to 46. Price to earn, forward earnings is 51. That will probably come down as well, although it's definitely still expensive on an absolute basis. Price to free cash flow before the market opens today is at 33. I believe it's going to dip all the way down to about 24. And that puts it in line with some of the cheaper prices we've seen over the past five years, creating probably a fairly good entry point if you're interested in owning shares of Fortinet. Um, we can also, however, do a reverse discounted cash flow model. And for that, we come over here and we simply type in the ticker symbol. We put in the free cash flow over the last 12 months. And after we found out what we did today, it's about $2 billion. Put a terminal growth rate of about 2.5% and a discount rate of 10%. And now we just have to play, <clears throat> excuse me, with the growth rate here in order to figure out how fast does free cash flow have to grow to justify today's price? Well, what about a 10% growth rate? Oh, that's what it is, a 10% growth rate. So if you think about it, 10% growth per year in free cash flow doesn't sound impossible for the company. That is something that they should be able to accomplish. <clears throat> So when I think about the valuation, I think it's actually pretty attractive. Now, valuation is difficult to get right. And that's why Brian Froldy and I are excited that we are starting our second cohort of Valuation Explained Simply. It will be running from August 7th to the 23rd, every Monday and Wednesday from 8 to 9.30 p.m. We're going to cover things like total addressable market, multiples, discounted cash flow models. If you're interested in joining this cohort, you can click on the link in the show notes below. Use the call, use the code LASTCALL149 and you will get a the biggest discount we are offering to the public for the course. But be, be aware that that closes on August 6th. <coughs> In terms of Fortinet and the industry, it'll be interesting to see what everybody else reports. Until then, Brian out.